There's so many different calculations that are thrown around when you are investing or thinking of investing in real estate. I remember before I got started uh, researching for hours trying to figure out which one I should be using and what they meant. So, so I get it because it's hard to know which one to really pay attention to or more, which one's not to. Over the years, I figured out there are really only a select few that, that I now pay attention to and one of those is the cash on cash return. So I've talked about this before, about this calculation. However, I, I never really went into depth about what would be a good cash and cash return when investing in real estate. So in this video, I will. So watch until the end to learn more about this financial calculation and even the benchmarks I use to determine what would be a good cash and cash return for an investment property. Hey, it's Tyler, 2015 Crew Magazine Investor of the Year and your real estate investing educator. I'm glad you landed on my channel where I'm, where I'm always sharing tips, strategies, just tons of information on how to start investing in real estate and all the benefits that come with investing in real estate. So subscribe to my channel and, and even hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video, which I do each week. So cash flow. Everyone always wants cash flow when invest in real estate. Now, before we dive into, into what and how the cash and cash return fin financial cash creation actually works, I should clarify for those learning about investing in real estate what the term cash flow actually means that everyone's always talking about. In its simplest terms, it's the profit. What is remaining from your, your income? The, the rent you collect after paying your expenses, you know, your mortgage, your cost you incur, at your property. This is the money that you are basically putting in your pocket each month. This is why so many investors love cash flow properties because you're making money now, which is awesome. However, just because the property cash flows each month, this doesn't always mean that it's a good investment. In fact, over the years, I've seen tons of properties where uh, in the description of the listing on the MLS, it, it details the income and the expenses. And, and then you read that it's a great cash flow and property. And right away, you start thinking of, of buying this property just based on the cash flow that apparently, that apparently gets. Now, I've learned to tell myself not so fast because by applying the cash on cash return financial calculation, you can get a more thorough understanding understanding. Um, if the property really is a, ga a good cash flow investment. For instance, uh, I get asked all the time, what, what is a good cash flow on a property? Uh, many, including myself at, at one point in time, thought $100 a door is great. However, let's say you're looking at two duplexes. One's priced for $300,000 that you project would cash flow $100 per door. The other priced at $200,000 and projects a monthly cash flow of $75 per door. So if you were thinking in terms of the month, monthly cash flow amount, you'd automatically think that the $100 is better. The $300,000 property is better. But when applying the cash and cash return calculation in which you take the annual cash flow and divide it by the cash investment you made into the property, you can see here, so I got put on the screen here, that the property that cash flow is only $75 per month is the better investment as the percentage of cash flow to your investment, you know, your cash on cash return, which in this example is just, we're just gonna say is your down payment amount to keep it simple, is higher. So 4.5% for the $200,000 property compared to 4% for the $300,000 property. This is why you can't just use a simple benchmark of $100 cash flow per unit. You need to measure your cash flow against the cash you invested to really determine which property will provide the best return. In my example, it was probably obvious that the $75 per month would be the better investment. However, if you were to start factoring in um, possible renovations that a property would need, that in essence is additional cash you are investing, which will then affect your cash and cash return. Actually, here's how that might play out so you can get an idea of how powerful this financial calculation is. So as you can see, if we project the $200,000 property you know, it would need $20,000 in renovations. Well, now the $300,000 property becomes the better 
investment based on you know the cash on cash return that the property generates. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes investors make in that they will buy the more affordable property and then they end up dumping a, a bunch of money into it to get it up and running. And most of the time, and, I, and I've been guilty of this, and if you have too, I, I'd love to hear your story. So go ahead and let me know in the comments section below if, if you've done this. Anyways, we, we end up putting even more money into the property for, for renovations, which then you know greatly affects your cash on cash return and you would have been better off buying the more expensive property. This is why I preach that when you invest in real estate, it, it really is all about the numbers and it really is about being very conservative with your numbers so that you know the return, you project the return that you're gonna generate and that you're, you know, you get very close so you don't run into something like this. All right, so you're probably wondering, well, is what is a good cash or cash return to achieve? This was one of the biggest hurdles I faced when I started because no one anywhere ever told me what would be a good cash on cash return. It took many years of investing in real estate and analyzing thousands of properties to develop benchmarks of the cash on cash returns I look for um, in a property that I'm considering purchasing. For instance, when I'm fixing and flipping properties, I always try to get a 100% cash on cash return on my investment. When using a, a buy and hold strategy, so buying a turnkey property, uh, and if it's a, a very, you know, a much newer property with not much maintenance required because a lot of things are newer and rents are at market rate, I, I want to get at least a 10% cash and cash return. If, however, the property I'm looking to purchase to hold as a rental, um, you know, needs some TLC and the rents are below market, I want to make sure I get at least 5% cash and cash return upon purchasing it. This way I put a bit of cash in my pocket, uh, enough to cover all my costs, with, with a bit of a buffer, so the 5%, until I can improve the property a bit and get market rents, higher rents, with the goal being to increase my cash on cash return to about 20%. In fact, I talk uh, more about this strategy, which I call the be higher strategy, and in this video, it's gonna be right, right here. Nope, yeah, right here, uh, which, is, which is titled How to Build Wealth in Real Estate Fast. All right, if you wanna learn about all the benchmarks I use when investing in real estate and even the spreadsheets I use, which, which uh, instantly will calculate the cash and cash return financial calculations for you, among the others that I also um, use when I'm investing in real estate, uh, which I talk about in this video here. Just just click, um, actually, no, actually gonna be below in the link below, uh, you, uh, where you can download uh, my fast investing roadmap. So I hope this helped. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate if you clicked on the thumbs up button below and also subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can continue your real estate investment education. Lastly, be sure to check out some of my most recent videos right here. I mentioned one earlier. Uh, there's gonna be one here to my, to my left or right to learn more about how to invest in real estate. Thank you and we're gonna see you at the next one.